Hello everyone. So today we have with us Dr. P. K. C. Bose. He is the Vice Chairman and Managing Director of Amazon Industries. So hello, Dr. Bose. Welcome on board. Thank you. So there is one thing we know about you for sure that you're a hardcore wind and energy and sustainability enthusiast. But can you tell us a little more about yourself before we start the interview? About me? Yeah. Okay. I am an to start with. I am an alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad and also the Wharton Business School in the United States and also the Kellogg. Mm -hmm. And I did my PhD from the Washington International University in DC. And then I have been working for the Germans for last uh, nearly thirty years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the third uh, organizations I'm I'm building in organization I'm building in India. The first one I started was SCW Eurodrive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a power transmission company and I run this company for a long time and then subsequently I moved it to an advanced material company called Cytex, which also I set up a plant for them in India and I run the company, I stayed with them for 15 years and last two and a half or three years I am bringing Enercon to India. Uh, when Enercon is the largest wind turbine, gearless wind turbine maker in the world. Right. having 20,000 people working globally right. with a turnover of 6 billion euros. Right. So we have a very, very interesting and ambitious plan as far as India is concerned, because India will be our global export hub, which means we produce everything here and then we export to the global market. Correct. So uh, before we go into what exactly are these big plans for India, my first question to you would be, Despite the tariff caps being increased for wind power projects, uh, the interstate transmission systems program received a negligible response in summer uh, in 2019. Do you feel this is because of lack of preparedness in supply chain or uh, is there some sort of disconnect that discourages developers from participating in new projects? Yeah, it's, uh, actually, the, the problem is uh, here in India, there are a lot of things which uh, I cannot even tell that this is because of one reason. There are many okay. reasons. Okay. The regulatory reasons, the constraints of the grid and also the state regulatory authorities. Mm -hmm. Then a lot of policies are not in place and many, many reasons. And uh, if you really look at from 2000 until 2016, mm -hmm. the tariff in India, it was like a, it was called a feed-in tariff. Therefore, it was everybody was enjoying and everything was going on well. And right. subsequently, India introduced the, the bid-in tariff, mm -hmm. where the, the tariff has literally collapsed. Right. And uh, there were no hardly any takers. And then it is still continuing. But the government, I'm, I'm very happy to share with you that the current government is working really, really hard to fix up all these bottlenecks and problems. And I'm sure that maybe another one and a half, two years' time, India will be back and okay. up in wind energy. Okay. And uh, the second problem that has been a critical, you know, revolving thing in the wind industry has been the location, availability of location. So many companies have funds for it, but there is no land available. The companies which have land are in like uh, losses and everything. So do you think there is a potent solution for this? And, you know, can the government in any way help resolve this issue or make it easier for industries? Yeah, actually, if you really look at uh, right now, I'm speaking from um, um, Pune in Maharashtra, right. and uh, I was actually sitting with one of the very strong personalities in this this state, and he was also he he, he was the uh, earlier the finance minister and also the the planning minister, and also he was telling me that uh, uh, you know the policy upgradation is not happening in the state wise yeah. as well as. Uh, because there is always a rift between the state and the center. That is okay. where the, there is no cohesive effort to bring this sustainability program when it comes to renewable energy, especially wind okay. energy. Okay. So the, what is required for this country is a one India, one, work, one India, one energy. The okay. moment you think of one India, one energy, then you will only focus on sustainable in energy right. which is wind and solar mainly right. so now if you take the paris summit where our prime minister also said that 175 gigawatt by 2030 mm -hmm. and if you really look at that and currently we have just the wind is only just 
40 close to 40 gigawatt yeah. but so many faults we have to 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 uh, multiply to reach to that level to mm -hmm. do that the cohesive approach between all the stakeholders which includes we are only the turbine manufacturers but the ipps the independent power producers the regulatory authorities and so on and on right. so we need to have a very joint effort in order to bring wind as the most sustainable source of energy in india okay okay so um right now you said about one india one energy but um you do you think till now it till the time it's not getting implemented do you think there is a biased focus on solar energy because of which the wind energy sector is falling behind and is there any way how uh, the country can you know overcome this gap that is there in solar energy and wind energy yes uh, because solar energy is solar energy all you need is the land land parcel yeah you, or the roof yeah. So the infrastructure wise if you really look at it to build a wind farm mm -hmm. you have maybe 10 times more challenges and struggles right so and good sites like the class a wind sites are not available mm -hmm. if they are available they are also having the uh, the old turbines which are 20 25 years old which are occupying that the small turbines are occupying the best wind sites Right. If they take out that old turbines and they do the repowering, India has India can multiply five times more. Okay. From the same site. Okay. You know what is happening? The the best sites, the small turbines are occupied. Mm -hmm. So you need to remove those ones and put the bigger turbines. So your generation will be five times more. Okay. So this policy is not in place. The repowering policy, India doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. So it is a high time India implement a repowering policy whereby the best of the sites can be used for the bigger turbines whereby your production will be much more higher. Okay. So this is the, the best thing India should do it as a first step. Right. Second step is that there are so many states which are now developing for the class C or class uh, three wind sites. Right. So the, the government is, of course, the, the central government is definitely supporting. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, the state government and central government has to work hand in hand okay. in order to, you know, remove all the roadblocks. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. plus the best solution is offering the hybrid, which is wind and solar. Okay. That's the best combination. Because okay. you take the case of Cochin Airport, yeah. the only airport in the world having 100% solar energy yeah now when they had the flood in kerala mm -hmm. they lost so much because the airport couldn't revive the situation because it was flooded with water yeah all the panels were flooded uh, under the water right. so to to take this the uh, put the system back into operation they took so much time on the process they lost a lot of money okay. imagine that if they had an alternative a wind then right. they have switched over to the wind to solar, solar to wind, based on the availability and the uh, the comfort. Yeah. So we, they couldn't do it because they were one hundred percent only on you know dependent on solar. So okay. it has its advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And again, the time it is only dust, and you know you have to clean the panels. For that you need water. Yeah. So you will where will you get the water? So India, we have as such, we have a shortage of water. Yeah. So the scarcity of water, the dust will accumulate to the panel, and uh, so your productivity will go down and so on. In wind, there will not be anything. If you, once you install in the right place, you continue getting the wind for next 20 to 25 years, right. constantly. So is, is it like a one-time investment that the government has to, major investment that the government has to make into these wind, uh, uh, yes. wind projects? and you know they'll be good to go for the next 20 to 25 years yes it is only one time capital investment but of course there will be some maintenance but these are yeah. very very little okay very very little okay so, yeah. uh, okay and my next question to you is despite there being uh, various challenges and in the in the country and you know in the industry itself you have some very strong competitors uh, in the industry so what new business models are you implementing to ensure you have an upper hand in the market yeah, so if you look at all the manufacturers on technology wise, we are so much of ahead. 
because right. our we are the one and the only company who produce gearless technology okay this means the all that other wind turbine makers they all have huge uh, gear boxes right. so that will only add the weight of the turbine right. in our case that will be the lightest because we have no gear box Okay. Number one. Number two is the maintenance cost is so low compared to the gearbox driven, mm -hmm. and they need to change the oil frequently and so on. There are many challenges. Mm -hmm. And the places like Jaisalmer in Rajasthan, for example, when the dust and uh, it's a highly dusty place right. where this survey, I mean, these gearboxes it catches a lot of you know dust, mm -hmm. and which will also reduce the efficiency of the turbines. In our case. We, are, we don't need any of this, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we don't have any of these problems because mm -hmm. this is completely driven electronically. Right. This is called a direct drive, mm -hmm. so which is very low mm -hmm. in maintenance cost. Very importantly, we have to mention that India is going to be our global export hub, which means what we are looking at the moment, not to sell in the Indian market, mm -hmm. but to export from India to the world market. Okay. So this is our highest priority before we launch Mm -hmm. our indian specific turbine okay yeah that is that is something very new i haven't honestly i was researching about it i i didn't hear your competitors or anybody approaching the market in in this in a reverse manner basically you know first yes. you prioritize and then you get it get uh, customized for india Great. that's right and because by the time we start our indian turbine selling mm -hmm. the tariff also will go up i'm right. sure about it and also, we will have a much more uh, comfortable situation. Right, right. I'm, I'm quite optimistic on that. Okay, okay. And my next question to you is a very important question: digitalization. So it's been a very big part of India uh, in you know India's current growth and everything. So can you uh, maybe tell some ways in which digitalization will be a big part of the wind energy sector first, and also maybe you can elaborate on some digital innovations that your company is doing. Yeah, digitalization is anyway going to be the future. We are talking about artificial intelligence yeah. and uh, cloud computing and uh, mm -hmm. everything cloud you wanted. And so <clears throat> in wind energy sector, again, mm -hmm. you know, we had something called a SCADA. You know, SCADA was only to monitoring the performance of the turbine. Mm -hmm. This was not very, you know, modern technology driven. And today we have a cloud based whereby from the from my mobile, I can I can see on what speed my turbine is working in the Kutch region or in Czech Republic or in uh, Minnesota in the United States. Oh, okay. So it is it is easy for me to every every moment to get. You suppose I have a hundred turbine wind park. Mm -hmm. Every turbine I will get to know what speed this is working and what uh, what how much is the power it is being generated. Everything I can get all the details. Correct. So this is absolutely the digitalization is not only in uh, uh, in the COVID time for you know delivering food or you know banking system, but it is also for the industries like us. Mm -hmm. We can get all the details what we want, and this is on handy. You can have it on your mobile phone. Right. Right. Okay. And um, so, how according to you, how committed is the renewable energy sector to the Atmanirbhar Bharat mission and where does wind energy place itself in the uh, wind energy sector place itself in this journey? Yeah, I would say that if you really look at the self-reliant India or Atmanirbhar Bharat, mm -hmm. you know, the one of the highest priorities for the government is the renewable energy, that is okay. solar, wind, hydel, and so you know, biomass. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, India by 2030, India wanted to have. 100 gigawatt of solar, mm -hmm. 60 gigawatt of wind, yeah. and the rest is divided between biomass and hydel. Uh, uh, so in order to achieve that, the government is also giving a lot of option to customers. Now, you know, and I can tell you that if you take only one example, suppose all the IT companies in India decide that they wanted to 50% of their source of energy, they wanted to use the renewable energy, either solar or wind. Yeah. And I can tell you, our country will be one of the, the front runner for attaining the 
the zero carbon. Right, right. Yeah. So this, for that, the joint effort is, see, Self-Reliant India is a dream by the Prime Minister of India. In order to fulfill the dream, you and me, all of us are to do a lot. Yeah. So th that is what everybody should think of. You know, if all the IT companies who are one of the uh, power guzzlers and uh, they should take initiative, the same as the manufacturing industry in India, automobile industries in India, right. and then you take the electric vehicle, which will reduce the pollution. So when you talk about climate change and global warming, and when you look at the renewable energy, solar or wind, especially right. the wind, right. you know, you can make a so big difference in people's lives. And that is exactly the sustainability we should create for the next generation. All right. All right. And uh, my last question to you. So if you uh, if you were to summarize, what would you insinuate are the biggest necessity for wind sector in India? And there's a second part of the question, which is how does Enercon plan, plan to grow in India amidst all these challenges that are there currently? Uh, can you repeat the first question? I, I, it was a little bit breaking. Okay, so the first question is that what would you uh, insinuate are the necessities for uh, wind sector in India to you know grow? And second part of the question is what are in the con plan of action for it? Okay, to grow in India? the first question, my answer is the all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. See, the government is an umbrella. Right. Under the umbrella, we all are there. So mm -hmm. all the stakeholders, we should come together with one mission and vision that we wanted to establish the wind energy sector and make India's self-reliant in sustainable power. Mm -hmm. For that reason, we are only one small part of it. We only make the turbines. Right. The independent power producers, the land developers, availability of the land, uh, acquisition of the land, vacation, vacating the land, uh, mm -hmm clearing uh, the systems in, uh, in uh, the, you know, we are still working on a lot of, you know, traditional way, which needs to be changed. And that is the reason in India now, there are so many international agencies have established, like uh, GVEC, for example, Global right. Wind Energy Council, they are in India at the moment. Right. They, can, they can give a lot of suggestions because they have international experiences. Mm -hmm. They can support government and us. Mm -hmm. They can balance between us and saying that do's and don'ts which will bring us to elevate India to the next level as a renewable energy country. Mm -hmm. And as far as Enercon is concerned, we are very clear that we wanted to contribute a lot. And this is the reason Enercon's business model in India, this is very important for you to know, mm -hmm. we are collaborating with the MSMB companies nice. who are technically, technologically very strong, but they don't have the money or they don't have a reach. So we are supporting the MSME companies to, to you know, support them to build organization for us in India, okay. whereby they will produce for us exclusively. Okay. And this business model is working so wonderful for us. The first plant, we, will, we are ready with the first plant producing the generator uh, by a small time company called Coral. Uh, in Erod in Tamil Nadu, where they are they are technologically excellent, but they don't have any reach internationally. So mm -hmm. we partnered with them and with a you know a stronger or a longer contract, mm -hmm. and they produce for us. And so they are happy, we are happy. Erod a sleeping place, a village. Yeah. Now become an industrial hub. Yeah. So I another one objective is to mm -hmm. hold the hand of Indian MSMEs and make them rise. That is great. That is great. So I have exhausted all my questions for you. I will not take any more of your time because I know you're a busy man. I'll just, I just so want much. to conclude it by saying what a pleasure it has been taking your interview because uh, it was so, uh, you know, enlightening in so many senses because there was so much information we didn't know. So, uh, is all mine and it's, a, it's